Hi, my name is Olya Avchinikova Vasilo and I'm the Education Manager at the International Testing Agency. Today I will take you through a brief presentation that covers all major aspects of anti-doping. The anti-doping system is complex and often difficult to navigate. This video covers all the key points without going into too much detail. If there's a topic that you're less familiar with, or if you still have questions after this presentation, there are plenty of resources that are available online. I encourage you to contact the World Archery, WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, or us at the International Testing Agency if you have questions or need more information. Before we go into the specifics of the anti-doping system, it is important to understand the why. We have rules in sport in order to preserve the spirit of it. We love sport because it's exciting and often unpredictable, in theory fair for everyone who participates. From equipment to scoring to team size to the field of play, these are all the rules that help us preserve the spirit of sport. The anti-doping system exists for the same reasons, yet in addition it is also important to understand that it serves another key role, to preserve, preserve the health and the well-being of the athletes. Let's briefly look at the anti-doping system and how it works. The key elements that you need to know are as follows. WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Agency, is the international independent body responsible for harmonizing anti-doping policies in all sports and in all countries. The World Anti-Doping Code is the core document of WADA. It is the key document that lists out all the anti-doping rules, policies and regulations for all signatories of the code. And World Archery is one of the signatories. To complement the code, there is a series of international standards that exist. For those of you who are athletes, coaches, and other athlete support personnel, the prohibited list is the key document from these standards. World Archery is a signatory of the World Anti-Doping Code and is therefore responsible for implementing an anti-doping program. If we go to the left, as members of World Archery, you're responsible for knowing and following the rules that are set out by the World Anti-Doping Agency and by your international federation. If we go to the right, we have the International Testing Agency, the organization that implements aspects of the anti-doping program on behalf of World Archery. In summary, you have the World Anti-Doping Agency making the rules. These rules are the code and the standards. Your international federation, World Archery, is responsible for following these rules. You as members of World Archery are equally responsible for knowing and understanding them. Us at the ITA are the support mechanism running the anti-doping program for your sport. Let's look at the definition of doping now. The most common understanding of doping is a positive test, which means that an athlete took something that is prohibited and got caught. However, doping is more accurately defined as the occurrence of one or more anti-doping rule violations. Now, what are these anti-doping rule violations? As you can see on the screen, presence of a prohibited substance is just one type of an anti-doping rule violation. There are other ways that an athlete or athlete support personnel can be considered as having committed an ADRV. Here are some examples. An athlete who refuses uh, to submit to sample collection when requested, or an athlete who is caught administering a prohibited substance or a method, or even a coach who is helping an athlete to do so. Tampering with sample collection equipment or forms, Failure to provide your whereabouts if you're an athlete in the registered testing pool or missed tests. All these are examples of anti-doping rule violations. Let me also differentiate between advertent and inadvertent doping. Advertent doping is an intentional choice for an athlete or athlete support personnel. And it is, of course, fundamentally contrary to the spirit of sport. Inadvertent doping does not happen on purpose. It is a result of lack of information or incorrect information. Taking a contaminated supplement is an example of an inadvertent uh, doping case. Surround yourself with trusted and knowledgeable coaches, doctors, therapists. However, always remember that the athlete is ultimately responsible for a positive test. Regardless of whether doping was intended or unintended, the principle of strict liability applies. That means that the athlete and or the athlete support personnel is responsible for committing an anti-doping rule violation even if they did not intend to dope. Let's discuss another important part of the anti-doping system, which is the rights and responsibilities of the athlete. We can start with the responsibilities. You always have to know and follow the rules and be available for sample collection when requested. You have to take the responsibility for what you ingest 
and you have to inform the medical personnel of your obligations as an athlete. And of course you have to cooperate with anti-doping organizations, for example WADA or the ITA, and your sport federation, World Archery. During doping control, you have to report for testing immediately if you're selected. You have to show valid identification. So during games, that can be an accreditation. And during a major event outside of games, it can be a passport, for example. And you have to remain in direct sight of the doping control officer or chaperone until you're completing the process and signing the form. And finally, you have to comply with the procedure. If you have any questions, you can always ask them. Let's quickly go over the rights of an archery athlete during doping control and beyond. So during doping control, you have the right to have a representative with you and you can request an interpreter if you need one. So a representative can be your coach, a team doctor or a team manager. It can be a parent if you're a minor as well. You can ask for a chaperone or a doping control officer's identification and you can ask any questions. You can request a delay for valid reason, so that can be cooling down, uh, finishing your competition or your race if you're competing in subsequent events, if you have a prearranged media commitment, or if you're receiving necessary medical attention. So all of those can be reasons to delay the test. You can also request special assistance or modifications to the process, for example, if you're injured and need a wheelchair, or if you're a para-athlete and you can ask for modifications to the process at that time. And you can record any comments that you may have on the doping control form. Note that the comments that you put on the form do not have any connection to the outcome of your test. And finally, you can note some of the rights that you have in case of an adverse analytical finding, which is essentially a positive test. You always can request a B sample to be analyzed and you can have a fair hearing in accordance to the World Anti-Doping Code. Now, how does the doping control process actually work? The process is defined by the World Anti-Doping Agency with clearly formulated rights and obligations that ensure that doping control satisfies the highest standards. That basically means that no matter where and when you are tested, the process should remain the same. The doping control process can be stressful and overwhelming for an athlete. However, it is a key part of sport. So as a high performance athlete or athlete support personnel, it is important that you know this process. So there are two types of doping control. It is urine sample collection and blood sample collection. To give you a better idea of how the urine sample collection process works, there's a short video that you can watch. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name's Alana. I'm from the ITA, uh, nice the International Testing Agency. Nice to meet you. Um, you've been identified today uh, for doping control. Um, can I just check your name, please? Yes, I'm Melody Lee. Yeah, great. So I'll just complete this. This is your notification form. So I'll just copy it off your yep. identification yep. there. Uh, and can I have your nationality? China. Yeah. And just noting down the date today. Uh, so on the form just down here, you've got your uh, athlete rights and responsibilities and mm -hmm. it's really important that you know what those are. Yep. So please have a read through here. Um, I'll get you to just sign here to say that you've been notified and just noting down the time of notification. Yep, correct. And I'll just get you to sign. Yep. Great. So the doping control is just down the hall, so I'll get you to come with me and then we'll complete the sample. Sure, let's go. Just right here. Hello. Hello, welcome to the doping control station. Uh, can I just check your accreditation please? Sure. Thank you. Great. Any delays today? No delays reporting today. Wonderful. Just checking the time. If I could just ask you to sign there, please. Yeah. Great, thank you. Come through. Thank 
Okay, Melody, um, we've done your notification. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you're nearly ready to give a sample, do you think? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll just transfer some of the notification information onto mm -hmm. the form. Yeah. Uh, so what's your date of birth? Uh, 4th of January, 1991. Okay, and I'll just get you to sign the form here mm -hmm. as well. So just read through the fine print there and just mm -hmm. sign. Great. So the next part of the process is um, passing the sample and uh, selecting a beaker. So um, I've got a number of beakers here for you to choose from. Um, and I need you to uh, have a look at each one, or just select one and make sure that you're happy with it. So pick a, pick a beaker, I'll give you a few options to choose from. I choose this one. Just check it, make sure there's no rips in the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't been tampered with in any way. No. Are it you happy good. with that one? Yes, okay. it looks good. Maybe even give it a bit of a squeeze down the bottom to make sure there's no holes in it. Yep. So just, yep. um, just grab it like this. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yeah, are you happy? Yep. Okay. Yep. So what you're going to do when we go through to the bathroom mm -hmm. is you're going to remove the beaker. Mm -hmm. So you're going to remove it from the bottom of the bag. You can pull it by the side or mm -hmm. down the bottom like so. Yep. Um, Whatever you do, when you take the beaker out, make sure that you don't put your fingers inside of the beaker. Yep, yep, so sure. holding it on the outside at all times. Yep. And then leave the lid in the bag for now um, and we can take that out later once you've passed the sample. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, sure. So you're happy with that one? Yes, okay. I'll take this one. All right, great. So we'll go through now through to the bathroom and we'll collect your sample. Yep, sure, let's go. Okay, Melody, now we're going to go through the process of sealing the sample. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing I'll get you to do is select from one of the four boxes on the right-hand side here. So just check over the box, make sure you're happy with it. It doesn't look like it's yes. been tampered oh, with. Oh, sealed? Yep. Now, when you open the box, you just pull these, just pull apart. That's it. Yep, just pop that on the left, open it up. Yep, you can chuck those things in the bin. Mm -hmm. Okay, Melody, first we're just going to have a look at how much uh, urine we have. Mm -hmm. uh, looking from it here, it's 120 ml. Is that yes, correct? Yes, correct. Yep. So I'll just note that down. Okay, so take everything out of the box here. Take all the bottles out and just pop them on here. Yep. You can throw away the pink slip in the bin. Okay, great. So the first thing we're going to do is just check all of the numbers, tops of the lids, bottles, and on the box that they all match up. Yes, everything matches. Great. I've just noted down the number two. And did you just want to check that that's right? Yes, correct. Great. Okay, so I'll get you to take the lids off the bottles. And just turn it upside down, sort of yep. thing, the lids. Great. And then we can throw away the red rings. Okay, so we have bottle A and bottle B here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with bottle B. Mm -hmm. So you can remove the film from the, from the beaker. Okay, and first we're going to be pouring into bottle B. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a little line on the side there and you'll just need to fill up to that point. So I'll, I'll okay. tell you when to stop. Okay. Yep, stop. Okay, and now we're going to put some of the urine into bottle A. We're going to fill it up a little bit higher this time, so up mm -hmm. to this line here. Keep going. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, great. And now we're going to put the rest into bottle B and just leave a little bit in there for me, just a few drops. Great. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to put the lids on the bottles. So just turn it until you hear the clicking noise. Yep, and until you can't hear, you can't push it any further. Great. And now the same for the other bottle. Perfect. And now I'm going to check the bottles for you just to make sure that the lids are on. sure that there's no air and that the bottles are sealed properly. Great, are you happy with that? Yep. Okay, good. Okay, so now we're going to put the bottles into the plastic wraps. Good. And just pull away the sticker inside and it should seal the bag. Great. Now I'm just noting down the time. And I'll just get you to put them back into the box now. Great. Now we're just going to check the specific gravity. So I'll just get you to take the lid off the beaker. Okay, it's 1.1505. Oh, yep. yes, I'll just get you to check. Yep, correct. Great. Okay, so I'll just note that down. Uh, okay, so the next part. Uh, did, have you taken any medications in the last seven days? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so I'll get you just to note them down just here. And Melody, do you have a therapeutic use exemption? No. Okay. Um, and I'll just get you to confirm too. Uh, do you agree to allow your sample to be used for uh, laboratory research? Has nothing to do with this test being positive or negative. Uh, it's just used uh, anonymously by the lab. If you're okay with that, I'll just get you to put a cross in the okay. box that says yes. Great. Mm -hmm. And were you happy with how everything went today during data yep. control? And it's if you good. are, yep, you can put a comment down the bottom there. Great. Uh, okay, so now we're just going to go through the whole form and just make sure yep. that you're happy with everything in the form. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see, uh, we had a full sample today, so we didn't have a partial. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to cross this out. Okay, down here, as you can see, it's got your the 130, mm -hmm. 120 mils. Yes, correct. Uh, we've also got the number of the box. So just checking again that the sample, that the bottle numbers are match up. Yes, correct. To specific gravity. Mm -hmm. And then we've got down here the medications mm -hmm. that you declared today yeah. and that you had no comment. So we're just yeah. going to put a line through yeah. the rest of the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm just going to get you to read just a couple of lines down the bottom here. And then I'm going to get you to sign just here. Great. 
you're all done, Melody. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll I'll get you to go out through the signing thing, mm -hmm. just signing sheet, just sign out. Um, and Mark is there; he'll assist you with that. Uh, so thanks very much for coming in today. Thank you, and good luck with the rest of your competition. One part of the urine sample collection process that you do not see in the video is the actual provision of the sample. So on this slide here, you can see three images. The first one shows a sample collection from a male athlete and uh, the observing person, so the doping control officer. The second one in the middle shows sample collection from a female athlete with the doping control officer observing in the front. And finally, the third image shows sample collection from a young athlete where there is a witness or a, an accompanying person with the athlete observing the process, but not the athlete directly. On your screen, you can see a QR code that links to a page where you can see the steps of the doping control process in different languages. So if you prefer to follow this presentation in a different language, you can scan this code and access our page in Arabic, Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, and Russian. And we'll be adding more languages soon. Now we've discussed notification, the doping control form, urine sample collection and blood sample collection. But what actually happens to the sample once it's been sealed and shipped? All the samples are packaged and sent to a WADA accredited laboratory for analysis. The transportation will be monitored by chain of custody procedures to ensure security of the sample and that the samples can be tracked. Note that the laboratory does not have access to your name or your nationality. They only see the sample number. This is why it is so important to always check the number on the blood or urine sample collection kit and vessels, as well as on the doping control form. As we know, certain substances and methods are prohibited in sport. These constitute the prohibited list, which is produced by WADA and updated at least annually. A substance or method can be added to the prohibited list if it's deemed to meet two of the following three criteria. It has the potential to enhance or actually enhance a sport performance. The use of the substance or a method represents an actual or potential risk to the health of the athlete. And the use of the substance or method violates the spirit of sport. As an athlete or athlete support personnel, it is very important that you're familiar with the prohibited list and know how to check whether a substance that you're planning to take or administer is prohibited or permitted. Remember, as an athlete, you are solely responsible for what you ingest or use. The prohibited list is a comprehensive, yet it is also a complicated document to navigate. So here are a few tips and tricks to help you navigate this part of the anti-doping system. Both medications that require a prescription and those that can be bought over the counter can appear on the prohibited list, so check everything that you purchase. Anytime you need a prescription, remind your doctor that you're an athlete and subject to anti-doping regulations. Make sure that your doctor is able to confirm that the medication prescribed does not contain any banned substances. The list is divided into substances and methods that are prohibited at all times and ones that are only prohibited in competition. Remember that different substances take different amounts of time to leave your system. Take that into account when taking substances prohibited in competition. Some medications are prohibited in large doses. If the medication you're taking is subject to this limitation, carefully monitor your intake. After you have confirmed that the medication you want to take is not prohibited, make sure that you take exactly what was recommended. Some brand names offer multiple variations of the same product. For example, non-drowsy, fast relief, extra strength, long-lasting, and so on. And there's a real risk that one will contain a prohibited substance, whereas another one may not. Be careful when traveling. What is allowed in your country may be prohibited in another. Medications with the same brand names may have different composition. And finally, check your medication. Global Dro provides athletes and support personnel with information about prohibited status of specific medications. It's based on the current World Anti-Doping Agency prohibited list, so use it to check all of your medications. Now let's briefly discuss supplements. 
Extreme caution is recommended when using supplements. Many countries do not follow strict rules in the manufacturing and labeling of these supplements, which may lead to a supplement containing an undeclared substance that is prohibited under the World Anti-Doping Code. A significant number of positive tests have been attributed to the misuse of supplements and poorly labeled dietary supplements. The risk of taking supplements should be weighed against the potential benefits that may be obtained. The use of supplement products that have been subject to one of the available quality assurance scheme can help reduce but not eliminate the risk of inadvertent doping. Athletes who have evaluated the risks associated with supplement use may come to a conclusion that the pros of using this supplement outweigh the cons. In this case, some of these tips can help you make an informed decision when selecting a supplement type and brand. So for example, you can avoid some of the following, the too good to be true claims, herbal ingredients, claims of being used for thousands of years, or on the opposite, newest scientific breakthrough or secret formula. Also look out for ingredients ending in the three endings that are listed on your screen and for any advertisements of muscle building, weight loss, sexual enhancement, or energy increase. Athletes, like all people, may have illnesses or conditions that require them to take particular medications or undergo procedures. If the medication or method an athlete requires to treat an illness or condition falls under the prohibited list, a therapeutic use exemption, or a TUE, may give that athlete the authorization to take the needed medication or a method. TUEs are granted according to a clear standard outlining the conditions, the stakeholder responsibilities, and the TUE process. There are strict criteria for TUEs. The use of the substance is necessary for health and it will not result in performance enhancement beyond a return to normal health. There's no reasonable therapeutic alternative and it must be obtained in advance and not retroactively, except for emergency or exceptional situations. Performance enhancing drugs have the ability or potential to drastically alter the human body and its biological functions, including the ability to considerably improve athletic performance in certain circumstances. These drugs, however, can be extremely dangerous and in certain situations deadly. Negative and side effects on health vary greatly depending on the type of drug, frequency, way of administration, duration of use, etc. However, all performance enhancing drugs have one thing in common. They were developed by the pharmaceutical industry to treat an illness, not to enhance performance. Therefore, they're not meant to be used by athletes. So we've discussed the consequences of doping on health, but there are also many other consequences and one of them is sanctions. So sanctions as per the World Anti-Doping Code range from a warning to a life ban depending on various matters. These include the type of the anti-doping rule violation, the circumstances of each individual case, the substance or the quantity of the substance found uh, in the sample, and the repetition of an anti-doping rule violation. But there are also other consequences. So these can include anything from disqualification of results of past athletic achievements, financial sanctions and reimbursement of prize money, or removal from national or professional team. It is also important to remember the secondary consequences of doping. So these of course include your reputation as an athlete or a loss of sponsorship, end of career, or a negative effect on your post-athletic career. And these are just some among many examples. As an athlete or athlete support personnel, you can help protect the integrity of your sport. If you have reasonable grounds for suspecting doping, you can report it through Speak Up, the World Anti-Doping Agency's whistleblowing platform. Speak Up is a secure platform intended for athletes and others to report alleged anti-doping rule violations under the World Anti-Doping Code, non-compliance violations under the Code, or any act that could undermine the fight against doping in sport. Whether you submit an anonymous report or provide your contact information, everything remains strictly confidential. Every time someone steps forward with information on doping, we move closer to a clean and fair playing field for all. On behalf of myself at the International Testing Agency and everyone at World Archery, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video.
If you want to get in touch with us, or if you still have any questions, you can always email education at ita.sport and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. But you can also access a wealth of resources available online. So two of them are listed on your screen as an example, either the World Archery website or the WADA website and the resources section. So thank you once again for keeping your sport real.